Hi, Chris Eager, Guns.com. Welcome to Select Fire, where we talk about gunsmiths, shops, and shooting. On this episode, we stop in at Serbu Firearms in Tampa, Florida to visit with one of the strongest personalities in the gun world, Mark Serbu. We get a glimpse behind the scenes, the guns, the shop, the shooting, to see what makes the mad scientist tick and how Serbu continues to reinvent himself. Today we brave Florida love bugs, sweltering heat, and the twists and turns of Mark Serbu. We're outside this nondescript building in an undisclosed location in Tampa, Florida. No signage. The mystery inside is Mark Serbu, Serbu Firearms. Something of the Willy Wonka of the gun world. Let's go inside and check it out. I had heard about the eccentric and perhaps at times infamous Mark Serbu for years. When he isn't shooting machine guns out of airplanes or arguing with Seinfeld actors, he's making cool guns and filling niche interests. So we've only been here for about five months and it's a nightmare to move something like this as you can imagine because these machines aren't exactly lightweight. Two CNC mills, two CNC turning centers. We're in the middle of making a heck of a lot of trigger housings right now. When I met Mark, he was eager to show me around and detail the inner workings of his shop. However, if you've ever met him, you know he's prone to telling stories and sliding into tangents. Of course, like three weeks after we'd moved in here, uh, and the day after Christmas, and during the government shutdown, ATF decided to come by and do a compliance inspection. That, that was a nightmare, because I'm here by myself, and it's like, uh, like ATF doesn't shut down. No, and it, it's like, okay, essential government personnel. What, the ATF compliance people are essential, but... Yeah, we've never actually had more than, I think the most we ever had was eight employees. Right now, I think we've got, uh, I think we're at seven. My daughter works here mainly because she has a degree in French. This is Valerie. I made this. <laughs> Not one of my better moments. <laughs> and that's baby you, uh, that's John. He actually helped us move. And even though he was like the loudest human being I've ever heard, we still let him come back to work here now. And he works part time. He like cleans bedpans at night or something like that. Run my own business at night. I do commercial carpet cleaning. So there's crazy stuff around here. Like that's a that's a, a gas turbine powered auxiliary power unit out of a KC-135 tanker. Just because? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I like gas turbine engines. Our welder's little air conditioned tent because he's spoiled. Is his air conditioner still at Valerie? Oh. You just got the AC on for you. Only in Serbu's place would you see a Stern Gear 44 hanging out in the corner. And then right here, we've got Uzi Flats, Serbu Super Shorty, 50 cal parts, a 22 rifle, all these 50 cals, and then an operable Swedish bazooka, Serbu. Finally, we are ready for the piece de resistance, the journey into the mind of Wonka himself. So we're, we're in your office, or a space that serves as your office, I should say. Um, it's kind of, it's re really well organized. Um, <laughs> Clean. Obsessive compulsive about this. He's not standing over gunpowder. Yeah. He's not standing <laughs> next to two 10 pound kegs of gunpowder. Yeah. Totally normal in the office. So how does this like represent Mark Serbu? Well, it just, million things at once, messy, um, no order. That's about right. So I got here, I've got gun storage here, and of course, all the stuff I have doesn't fit, so there's guns along the wall, or giant barrels, there's a 20 millimeter Vulcan. Some Vulcan just hanging out. There's <laughs> yeah, some just, 30 millimeter barrels in the corner. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's and you know, I, I'd like to say that it's really messy because we just moved, but it's probably gonna be like this for a long time because I'm just a slob. But I do know where everything is. Unless the ATF is here. That's that's the door off my bedroom, by the way, from 1966 through 1987. There it is. That's the Bin Laden hunter gun. That was his, uh, it, Gary Faulkner, who was famous, he made it on Letterman for being the Bin Laden hunter. And how many times have you uh, launched this mission to go to Pakistan to find Osama Bin Laden? Oh, I mean... After reminiscing and getting lost in the sauce, Serbu showed us some of his latest drawings. And then we're off to the shop floor to see guns that were currently in production. All right, Mark, uh, you've been around for 23 years in, in business. And uh, you're telling us the other day you had something like 100 different designs on the drawing board, one stage or another. Let's talk about some of the ones that actually made it into production. Like, what was your, uh, your first gun? 
Well, that's easy. And, and one of the reasons it is the first gun is because I didn't make the gun and it's a Ruger. So Ruger did the gun. My part was the suppressor or silencer, depending on who you want to argue with. Um, integrally suppressed. It's got about a six inch suppressor tube. And uh, I did all this old school manual equipment in my garage way back. 87, I guess the first one. The one claim to fame on the Cyrus, it's called the Cyrus, which is actually shortened from Osiris, which is the Egyptian god of the dead, just to have a you know nice evil name for the gun. But I put these flutes on the tube and that that's really what sold this gun because it kind of, everybody else had just a plain old stupid tube and this kind of looked cool. It had a little bit of, little bit of style to it. Uh, and it works well, it, it sounds great, and uh, got about a hundred of them out there. But it was a good start because it, it wasn't really difficult. All I needed was my manual lathe, my manual mill, and I'm in business. Hey, I oh, I like it. I say he's dead. I like it. Smooth, isn't it? I, yeah, let's, let's I go ahead I wish I could take credit a... for the gun, but yeah, it's all Ruger. Oh man, this, this will make you want to get a stamp. Quick. Next, uh, let's talk about the, uh, you, you got, you went from a 22 to a 12 gauge. That's a kind of a big jump there. There was, uh, there was a group that I was involved. We'd gone to different events, and this one guy I always hung out with, and we rented cars together, rented hotel rooms, whatever, and I owed the guy a bunch of money. It was like five or 600 bucks. And he says, ah, instead of giving me money, why don't you just make me a really short Mossberg shotgun? Make it the shortest you can. I said, oh, okay. So I sat down with this thing, and, and it, it took me a year because I hated it. I thought it was the dumbest idea in the world. I mean, it's, it, it, you know, it's, you got something you hate, you just can't do it. But I finally got through it. And, you know, it, cause it's just, it's a hack, you know, just chop the barrel off, make a different lug and weld the lug on. And I made this little, this little grip. You know, he said, I'll make it kind of like the Miami Vice thing. And, and so, you know, and here it is. And all of a sudden we showed it around and everybody loved it. It was like, holy crap. And here, so here's, here's my first really successful product. But now, you know, years later, now this is like my, my free bird or my stairway to heaven. You know, it's that one of those songs that, yeah, it's a hit, but the, the artists are so sick of it. <laughs> I mean, I can't complain because it's, uh, you know, everybody knows our name from it. Everybody who knows our name usually associates with it. And of course, this is the famous super short. It's been in, what, 20, 30 different movies? Video, Lundgren, video games, yeah. You know, I mean, just, and you made these in both uh, 12 and 20s. And yeah, and the Both yeah. Remingtons and uh, Mossbergs. Yep, and that's, this is a regular old 2 plus 1. And this is actually an old, this is a 20 gauge, which is pretty rare. And that's a 12 gauge 3 plus 1 with breacher. a breacher end, yeah. We sell those to a lot of police departments, a lot of SWAT guys use them for door breaching. All right, so moving from the super shorty, what came next? Next was my first real gun from the ground up, which is the BFG-50. One just somebody else's gun that was hacked and modified nope. and put oh. your own stamp on. This is 100% Serbu. Yep, and what's funny is uh, this, this actually started from the trigger group. The trigger group was the starting point. I had a friend, he wanted a trigger group that would take AR-15 type trigger parts because he was making some kind of a, a machine gun off of it. So I had I had designed this thing up. Starting from this trigger group, I went with the rest of it and you know just it just kind of came, you know, kind of came together. It was kind of obvious and I designed it basically uh, like a really long day, like 35 hour day. <laughs> and uh, it's so you basically- came, Hold on, you came up with a design for this and, and clean sheeted it in 35 hours? Yeah. Yeah, that was insane when I finished. Don't let your thumb slip off. Valerie, 50 cal! Fire in the hole! Hello! We yell fire in the hole. Fire in the hole! Fire in the hole! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> he, went, he went back a couple of steps. Yeah, there's insane. nothing quite like a 50 cal inside a metal building. Shockwave reverberating. It's like being inside your own thunderstorm. <laughs> But it's here, so we're gonna shoot it. All right, so tell me what we have here. This is a significant difference from a single shot. Yes, this is the BFG 50A. This is my, my baby, my, our flagship product, and a uh, ton, a ton of work, but you know, I, not to blow my own horn, but you know, this thing's pretty awesome. You know, it's it, it, compared to the competition, which there's there's only one in production out there in the country. This one is 10 pounds lighter, has half number of parts, Far more accurate because it's got a fixed barrel, and and you shoot them side by side, and, and you'll love this one. It's it's so much nicer to shoot. It's a big clunking bolt though. What? How does yeah. It oh my God. It's it's so smooth. It's uh, too bad you don't have some kind of thing we can reach in the screen. Yeah, it's it's very it's nice. Fifty cal. Isn't that great? <laughs>
stuff. Well, Mark, it was great coming down. We've always wanted to come down and check out the facility. You're always a legend in the gun world, so it's always good to, to see you. Uh, thanks for having us. Hey, thanks for coming down. Appreciate having you. Thanks for watching Select Fire. We'll see you next time. I just hope I can get this through TSA. Uh, Mark, what do you think it's like for your employees to work for you? It's got to be awesome. I mean, you get to work for me. Duh. Oh, man. I'll tell you what. <laughs> it's kind of like punching yourself in the face repeatedly. Maybe a little bit better than that. And then I don't know if you guys want me to say that because it's like, no, we do. it might be bad. It might look bad for him, though, because.